Hi there everyone, it's Misty here. Welcome back to the scrapbookpile.com YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna be using the Mermaid For You Flip Flop from Lawn Fawn, um, the stamp set and the coordinating dies, and I'm gonna share with you how you can create a shaker card and still use die cuts for the inside of the shaker. So I have a piece of ombre paper just for my stash, and then I have a piece of this polka dot that's from the Sweet Sorbet. This is a paper um, that is carried by Scrapbook Pal, so you will find that link along with all of the other links in the description box down below. I am gonna be stamping and then coloring with Copics. You can fast forward to 323 if you're interested in skipping the coloring, but other than that, it's gonna be quick and simple. Um, and really fun. So I am stamping the mermaid in the school of fish and I'm going to stamp them twice. Um, I wanted two schools of fish because I really, I, I love odd numbers. So you're almost always going to see me use threes or fives or seven, something like that. Um, it's a, it's just more pleasing on the eye and I wanted her to be surrounded by two different schools of fish. So I'm going to be doing some really easy coloring today. You're going to be seeing me writing down my colors, but I'm also going to put them up on the screen for you. So for the fish, I just wanted a light yellow. So I'm just using Y32. The paper that we're going to be using is very pastel, the polka dots, and I wanted to keep that um, theme going. So for her tail, I'm going to start at the bottom with B23, and then we're going to work our way up to B10. These are my favorite combo for anything that is teal or aqua. I just think it's really, really pretty. For the um, belt, belly, abdomen area, I don't even know what to call this because she's a mermaid. I'm using purples, V15 and V12. And then for her top, I'm using RV02 and RV10. I did color her in the style of Ariel from The Little Mermaid, um, but I also took the colors directly from that ombre paper. For her skin tone, I am using three colors. I'm using E33, E31, and then R20 for her cheeks. And then for her hair, I'm actually using five, um, four colors, which may seem like a lot, but I felt like I needed a little bit deeper on what I considered her part. So you can see here that I added the part and then I'm using the darkest um, E19 on her ends. And then I'm going to flick in E08, leaving the center for my highlight. I don't like to leave it white because to me that makes it look like metal. So I always color that highlight in, but I like to leave it blank until I'm ready to add my third color. And this is when I decide that I need something a little bit deeper. So I'm just bringing it in right along the part and at the very tips of her hair. And that is my absolute favorite combo for a redhead. So I am using the largest of the stitch rectangle dies from Lawn Fawn to cut out my panel. And then this is just a scallop circle um, frame from my stash that I'm gonna use to cut out the center because I wanted a frame that I could use um, for the inside of the outside of the shaker card. You can see it right there. So I'm gonna start by adhering a piece of acetate to the card panel where I've cut out the um, circle and I'm gonna be using Tombow Mono Liquid Glue for that. You could use any, you can use tape runner, you could use whatever that you have and anything like that would work. After getting that adhered to the back of the panel, I'm gonna go ahead and add the circle, the scallop circle to the front after I trim off the excess acetate. And again, I just wanted a little bit of a frame on the inside of the circle to give it a little bit more interest. You could totally skip this step and just use a regular O circle to cut it out. Once I've done that, I'm gonna bring in the paper and decide where I want my um, images. And then I'm gonna get them adhered down. I'm just adhering them flat with liquid glue, but you could also adhere them down with um, dimensionals, etc. So I decided I wanted to tone down the polka dot just a little bit. It was still a little bit too bright and a little bit too busy. I want it to look like she's surrounded by bubbles, but I didn't want it to be too um, in your face. And I really, really like that. So I just adhered a piece of vellum to the front of the cardstock. And here you see me adhering the pieces. 
Again, this was a really quick and simple card, one that you can make really easily. Um, I'm making this one, it's um, basically a birthday card, but you can use any sentiment that you want to. Okay, so this is one way that you can do this. I'm going to adhere a piece of acetate to the front of this panel, but another way to do it would be to adhere the acetate directly to the back of the shaker. I'm not sure why I didn't do that because that's how I normally do this. Apparently I just wasn't thinking um, as I was crafting. I was, um, yeah, it's easier if you adhere the acetate to the back of the shaker. And I'll tell you what I mean when, as soon as we get the shaker full. But I'm just using some glue dots to help keep that adhered and keep the glue out of the way. So once that's done, it's time to bring in some adhesive. Initially, I thought I was going to use um, <laughs> these little squares and I'm like, wait a minute, that's going to take me two hours. So I brought in some phone strips. This is actually the end of my phone strips. I have to pick up some more. These are from EK Success but there are also others that you could pick up. And again, there are always, the well, excuse me, the supplies are always linked in the description box down in the, um, this, oh my gosh, the description box down below. Brian, could you work for me, please? Thank you. So I'm just going around trying to stay um, on the frame or a little bit behind it. That way none of the adhesive shows through in the middle. And then I'm just going to bring in some seed beads. This is my basically my preferred method of making a shaker card. And this is where I mean you could take the adhesive off the back of the circle and attach the acetate there. That would be a little bit easier than how I did it. Um, and then you could just add the dimensional adhesive as well and um, attach it to the images. Hopefully that made sense. So you would take off the adhesive from the back where the circle is and then you would adhere the acetate to the back of those that foam and then you would use glue or dimensionals or whatever to adhere this to the other panel. If you have questions, just leave them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. But it's pretty, I mean, this is pretty simple. Um, by, and if you're new to shaker cards, don't be um, intimidated. They can be really, really simple and hopefully this is one that you can use. The whole reason why I've tried this the very first time is because I wanted to create a snow globe and I wanted it to be somewhat 3D. And the way to do that, like I said, is to um, just add some acetate either over the images or over, um, you know, behind the shaker window. So I decided I wanted to bring in another pattern paper and this is a stripe that matches, um, it's from the same paper pad as that ombre and I just used another large stick rectangle to cut it out and we're going to get both of these adhered. It always takes me one or two tries to get that done and I'm almost always a little bit crooked but I feel like I did pretty okay job this time. And I love the little hint of stripes behind the um, ombre. So the ombre is kind of working as my plain or my neutral. Then you've got the dots that is my medium pattern and then the stripes which would be probably be my larger pattern. For the sentiment, this is from that Hero Art Stampin' Cut that I shared in the last video I did with you guys. And I think that was the last video I did. It's the birthday card, the 40th birthday card for my brother. Um, and I use the It's Your Day sentiment. I love this one because it's perfect for like a birthday card. Um, it could be, you know, a congratulation card, a graduation card, it could first day of school card. It could be a lot of different things. It doesn't just have to pertain to birthday. So I use an embossing buddy to remove the static. Then I stamped that with Versamark ink and I used some Lawn Fawn white embossing powder. And now I'm just heating it with my heat tool just to melt the embossing powder. I love embossing, it's so much fun. Just using a label die from my stash because I was having a hard time cutting it straight. <laughs> Story of my life. I even have a trimmer with a steel wire and I still had some issues getting it done. But once I've done that, I'm gonna run that through my die cutting machine and then I'm gonna put some more of those foam squares on the back and we're gonna get this adhered and that's gonna be the end of this card. 
So thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you. As I mentioned, all of the supplies are listed in the description box down below. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions on this card. Um, thank you so much for joining us over here at scrapbookpal.com. Don't forget to give the video a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.